Hello and welcome! My name is Ashura and welcome to this video where we will be talking about the new patch for Hearts of Fire and one part and one also uh, nicknamed Red Ball Express. And it's the first patch for the game, obviously, being 1.1. And mostly it uh, has a lot of fixes, a lot of tweaks and stuff, but it also has some pretty nice uh, UI changes and some nice features. So. Let's just get on with it. Well, the biggest change in my opinion is something that has to do with armies. So, um, I don't know if you, you've tried playing Germany before, but if you had, you've probably been struggling with doing the whole Blitzkrieg as efficiently as Germany actually did in real life. Um, especially if you don't do manual control. Like, of course, if you do manual control, you can probably match the speed. But if you want to do uh, plant and plant assaults and have the AI do most of the work. Most of the time they're, they're pretty slow at it. And that's where this first future w feature we're going to talk about comes into play and it's this up here. They've added these three buttons and they're basically how aggressively do you want to pursue battle plans. The balanced mana is what uh, the AI did before. Uh, the standard rules for carrying out battle plans are in effect. So it's just how it was before. But if you are, for example, going through mountains or going up against a superior enemy, maybe you're waiting for some other army to join the front line before you really want to push, or maybe you just have an army that's pushing way ahead of the others and you want to give them a chance to catch up, you can go to the careful and they will not attack uh, heavily fortif fortification, heavy fortified location, for example, and they'll avoid attacking provinces that will weaken the front line by making it longer and so on and so forth. And you can also choose aggressively and they will just attack, 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 attack. So for example if you do want to take Poland quickly, you just put up all your crazy German armies, just put them on aggressive and just execute and take Poland in just a few days. So this is a really great uh, modifier, making it even less um, necessary to micromanage, which is really nice. Then, something else that was really nice, so before if you wanted to say we wanted to edit this division, we wanted to make a division with only six troops, like say we didn't have this garrison one, well, a lot of countries don't have a garrison one, but say we wanted to make someone with six, we actually had to go and remove these, and as you can see it cost experience to do this, and that's pretty balls if you just want to have something with less people in it. But what you can do now is go in and create an empty one. Whoa! Now I don't have to pay to empty it all. I still have to pay to add them. Uh, so kind of in this instance uh, it would almost amount to the same thing. Um, because I'm adding as much as I would be taking away. But if you want to control for example in the start of the game where I start with a 9 nine box and some support, instead of having to remove 3 and blah 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 blah, I can now just make new divisions. It's really nice. Just really really nice. It just gives you way more opportunities here. And this actually also leads us to another change they made, uh, which is down in the UI changes. Uh, and that is, if you change something here, for example, put in an infantry, before it also showed these arrows, so saying, oh, you get more HP, more organization, guess, more weight, more supply, and it kind of tooltip, or uh, kind of shows you how it changes, and the colors of the arrow shows whether it's good or bad. But something that's been added now is tooltips for these things, and the most important tooltip is over here in the equipment. So here you can see by adding one more. Uh, I guess it's a company battalion. By adding one more battalion, we use 100 more infantry equipment. But since we have 87 divisions using the template, it will be 8,700 8, in total. And uh, since we have 11 or 115,000 in storage, we will end up having 106,000 after this. This is so awesome, especially for the start of the game when you are like trying to 
produce some extra equipment for your armies and wanting to add them in, but it's kind of annoying to add them in and then end up, end up with a huge deficit. So it's nice, this change is really nice, so you can really, really control your industry and your division planning much, much more simple. So another really great change. The next has to do with air, air combat. So if we go to our air, uh, we have some air planes in this area. They have added a really nice button here. This one. So before, when you wanted to like manipulate your fight, you could move these these to like an an air airport by doing this, but it, it was kind of hard to figure out where they were and get to that airport. Now there's a button for that. Just press this button and the airport where they are stationed opens up. Really nice. Just easy. Making it more easy. Also, if they've changed it so that when when you assign new planes, so if, if for example we assign some new planes here, we can put them in the mission area right away. Isn't that grand? That's really grand. It's gonna save you a lot of time. It was so annoying before that you had to wait for the icon to pop up. Oh, oh you have some airplanes not knowing what to do. Now you can go add them. It's just it's just those small things that just add up to make make the big wars kind of annoying. Another thing, and uh, now I, I don't use this whole sorting very much, but it, it changes now so that if you hold down shift and press one, it will show only that one. You can still just toggle them on as you could before, but I guess if you you like to only have a limited view here, you can now easily switch between them. Be aware though that like just like before, they are all still on one continuous list. So um, if you, for example, only show infantry equip equipment and then add some infantry equipment. Um, it will be number 25 in queue, so beware of that. But it's a nice change if you'd like to have a less cluttered interface. What else is there? Um, oh yeah, they added something more for air wings that I forgot. Um, we may have to go into here. Yeah, they added these buttons. So before you had to basically, you could adjust by one, or you could hold down shift to adjust by 10. And I think maybe, no, you could hold down shift now. There's these buttons so you can more easily add a bunch of fighters, uh, or more easily adjust these numbers when you wanna add huge numbers. That's also very, very awesome. Also, they changed navies so that it used to be that in order to change anything about a navy, you had to put it into port. Now you can add naval commanders to ships without having them in port, which is kind of like it doesn't make too much sense in in a game like Open Sallies, unless they add like the coastline. But we have planes. This planes. We can fly! Of course they can add, join a fleet that's out in, in the sea. Of course they can do that. And at the same time they added the, po the possibility of uh, navies merging even if they're not in port. And it will make the merging fleet travel to merging. So this means that we no longer... Like, we can still... It's still a nice thing. Like we've been doing in my, uh, my Let's Play series, we've been adding them to uh, fleets automatically. You can of course still do that, but you could also just have them spawn at the harbor and then add them to fleets as you see fit. And it gives you much more control over which ships join where. I've kind of been, like if you get um, caught up in something else, we had this, I think I just created this subfleet 1 out of subfleet, or subfleet 3 out of subfleet 1. And that that subfleet was like 58 subs or something like that, because it just hadn't, it, I let them join that Navy and just forgotten about it because it was doing other stuff. Now it, it you can just have them join a harbor and you have much more control over what's happening. So that's also nice. Let's see, is there anything else? I think that was the biggest changes. And of course, there's a huge number of AI uh, things that makes AI much harder to fight against. Hopefully, 
So we'll have to check that out in my next let's play. It will be a little bit harder to win. Uh, and then of course a bunch of bug fixes, which of course uh, is a thing in a game that's new as this. So that was the most important changes for the, um, the Red Ball Express 1.1 expansion or patch for Hearts of Iron 4. Um, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, if there's anything you want to ask about the expansion, or if there's anything you, anything you want to add, please leave a comment and I will answer as soon as possible. Uh, hope to see you in my next videos and until then, have a good day!